Hello and welcome to this sort of quick video talking about what is the Maintenance Reliability Transformation MRT process. Um, yes, you may have seen that it's a training course you can go on, but what is the process itself? What is it you're going to be learning? There, is, there are other videos on this particular topic, so I'm not going to dwell on this, but the fact is, the way we see it, there's a spectrum of reliability. At one end of the spectrum is pure reactive or breakdown maintenance. Equipment fails, <clears throat> we fix it. There's no planning and scheduling, we just react to the failures. We react to whatever appears to be most urgent. We don't have condition monitoring, you know, or effective condition monitoring, and perhaps any condition monitoring, warning us of the problems. A spares management might be real simple. It's just, okay, we need something, let's go find it. Don't have really good lists of our spares and so on. So anyway, that's reactive maintenance at one end. At the other end of the spectrum, we can paint a picture of, you know, the world-class reliability, world-class asset management, that we are really trying to achieve the lowest cost of ownership. Everything from the design and procurement process all the way through the maintenance and operations all the way through to the disposal of the equipment is all optimised so that our costs are minimised, our output and production and service levels are maximised, uh, hardly any, if no, safety incidents and, and uh, environmental incidents. So there's the sort of the, the two bookends. But somewhere in between we can say that there's a point where maintenance is under control. We're not gold standard, but we're not constantly suffering failures. When failures occur, we see them coming with condition monitoring so we can plan and schedule the work. But the work that we're doing and the way we're doing the work um, is of a higher standard so that we waste less time, we are much more focused, we eliminate most of the reasons why we experience the failures uh, and therefore we experience fewer failures and we have condition monitoring to help us see the problems coming. In all of those areas <clears throat> it's not gold standard planning and scheduling and spares management and condition monitoring and everything. We'd love to be, but we've got to recognise that it's, as a transition, we have to get the basics right. And so that's what MRT is for. MRT helps you get the basics right, bit by bit by bit in all of the areas, so that you can be successful. So, we have defined 12 main steps that you can go through and 78 recommended practices. Um, we give you the tools and the training to help you go through this process. The first step is all about generating a good relationship between maintenance and operations slash production so that they understand what they do that affects you and, they under and you understand what you do and how it affects them so that there can be cooperation, so there can be planning and scheduling, so there can be an improvement. We must prioritise what we are doing. You know, you might have a thousand assets, 10,000 assets, 30,000 assets. If you try to improve reliability, <clears throat> where are you going to start? At the assets that begin with A and then the ones that begin with B and, and so on? No, what you need to do is focus on the assets that are failing the most, costing you the most, causing the most downtime and so on. And we can do that with criticality analysis and bad actor analysis. So we teach you how to do it, we give you a tool to do it. And now, instead of focusing on your 10,000 assets, you're focusing on the 50 or really the the worst asset, then the second worst asset, then the third worst asset, and you are um, making huge progress even though you're only dealing with uh, you know, a few pieces of equipment. We need a basic computerized maintenance management system in place. We need a master asset list. 
We need a good, clear, structured list of your assets that is accurate and up to date. We need to look at the PMs that we're performing. Like what work do we perform because of warranties or regulatory requirements or just tasks that are being done because historically we thought we should and we're throwing out all the ones that are actually wasting our time, throwing out the ones that actually harm the equipment and we're identifying the ones that we should be doing that we haven't been doing. We can save a lot of time and money and <clears throat> eliminate the root causes of failure by going through this process. Then we're going to do basic planning and scheduling. We're going to make sure that all the work we do has procedures in place, it's planned in advance, we, we know, you know who's going to do the work or who, what sort of skills we need to do the job, we've got the spares, you know, the parts ready to do the job, the procedures and so on, everything prioritised, everything being done uh, the right way the first time. And in all these areas that I'm talking about, number one, there's overlap between them. And number two, we're not trying to be perfect in all of these areas. For now, we're just putting the fundamentals in place because by getting the fundamentals in place, we'll see the number of failures drop rapidly. Um, as part of all of this, we need spares management. We need the right spares. Um, we've got to take care of our spares. We've got to make it easy to find those spares when the jobs are uh, to, uh, to be performed. We need to lubricate our equipment properly. We need to have clean hydraulic fluids and so on because that is a very common root cause of failure with rotating machinery. We're going to keep our equipment clean. We're going to uh, improve our maintenance practices to what we call precision maintenance. The way we perform our fastening, uh, the way we align machines together, the way we balance rotors and in other ways, both for, me you know, for mechanical equipment, uh, electrical equipment and, and so on. Uh, we're trying to eliminate the reasons why equipment fails. We don't want rework, we want to do it right the first time and that's what precision maintenance is all about. And we want condition monitoring. Again, we'd love to have the world's best vibration program, infrared program, oil analysis program and so on. <clears throat> But it, it takes time. Right now we need the basics in place so that we've got a good enough view in the future that we have the time to plan and schedule. We're not being caught by surprise by equipment failing, which if you've got reactive maintenance now, that's what's happening. It's like, oh, something just failed. Or someone can hear something and it's going to fail real soon. Now remember, you might look at condition monitoring and think, or and lubrication and many of these things and sort of think, well shouldn't they be done first? Like, <clears throat> you can make an argument for all of those to be done first. Well, it's just a case, oh, look, it's a really bad analogy, but if you're building a house, you have to build the foundation, you have to, you know, build the, f the stumps and the floor and the walls and, and then you can put the roof on. You know, there's just an order you can do things in so that when you're doing them, you're ready to do them. You've got the information you need, you've got the people's psyche in the right place, um, you got everything prioritised properly. And finally we've got 5S in the workshop. It's, um, we'd like to do 5S across the whole plant, but right now we need our maintenance workshop to be organised, clean, um, we don't want to be wasting our time um, looking for tools and parts and so on. So we're just going to make sure our workshop's working properly. Now remember, again, these are, they overlap with each other. You know, um, um, we've defined all of the 12 steps and 78 recommendation, uh, recommended practices and we've got this tool that you can use and just graphically and you can see when should you do them. You know, um, now, you, you're seeing all these things fly by and think, oh my goodness, there's a lot of things to do. Well, yeah, there is a lot of things to do. And the colour coding, you know, is ex explained in, in the training. The point is we're really trying to <clears throat> explain when things should be done, <clears throat> why things should be done, why this should be done before that and why that should be done after that, you know. Um, we just tried to make it as easy as possible to follow this process.
people for years and years and years have been trying to break out of the reactive maintenance cycle of doom. There's this spiral you get into. It's distressing. Each week you might be thinking, right, this week I'm going to make these improvements. I've been on a, a, to a conference, I've read a book, I've taken some training, and now I kind of understand what I've got, got to do, so this week I'm going to do something. But the phone rings and there's a problem, and next day the phone rings and there's another problem, and you're fighting this fire and you're fighting that fire and you're dealing with this, and someone's yelling and we've missed the production target. Get to the end of the week and go, oh, well, okay, next week for sure we're going to make some progress. And next week it's the same old story. We've got to get out of that cycle. We've just got to get out of that cycle. And something that I haven't mentioned yet, you might look at all these things and be saying, oh, that's going to take lots of money. That's going to take extra people. No, it's not. I can say with a high level of confidence, you have the people you need. We're just going to use your existing people a little differently, a lot more efficiently. We're going to get rid of all the waste, um, waste in terms of things, doing things that we shouldn't be doing, and we're going to prioritise what we do. If we prioritise and we eliminate the waste, um, your existing crew can do all of this. We don't need extra people. And a lot of this is procedural. Yep, you might need to buy some condition monitoring tools and, and you know, for lubrication we might spend some money. But this isn't about spending lots and lots of money and employing extra people. It's using your existing people um, to, um, <clears throat> but just in a different way, in a way that's proven to work. So I hope that helps you understand what the MRT process is all about.